we're going to study some applications of double integrals. To begin with, we will talk about the surface area of a function of two variables. What is the surface area of the graph of this function? So let's say we've got some function f of x and y that's defined on a rectangle in R2. And let's say that this function has continuous first partial derivatives over that rectangle. As before, we are going to use the concept of subdivisions to try to assist us here. We are going to make a partition of the x and the y values. The x values will be partitioned into a set of grid points, x0 all the way up to xn. This will be our starting value a, this will be our ending value b, xi will simply be a plus i bunches of delta x, and delta x is going to be b minus a over n. So this means we are going to have n equal subdivisions in this x partition. This would be x0, x1, all the way down to xn like so. y will have an initial point y0, which will be c, y1, all the way down to some yn, which will be d. There will be a general point yj, c plus j delta y. And we are going to use the same number of subdivisions for the y variable. Now, generally, we don't need to use the same number, but for simplicity of our explanation, we will do so. So over here, we'll have a y0 and a y1, and this will go all the way down to some yn. This is going to create a set of grid lines on our region. And if we do the same in each direction, this will create a series of rectangles now, somewhere in this region, there'll be a general rectangle, R, I, J, as normal. So we are going to approximate the surface area above each little rectangle, R, I, J. Now, to think of it, we will draw in our region. Here is rectangle R, I, J, and directly above it is the function that we're interested in. So right above that, there will be some little patch of the function right here. So I'm going to call this area patch A, I, J. It's directly above this rectangle R, I, J that we used in our subdivision. Now this A, I, J generally looks like some curved patch, something like this. We're going to take this corner point to correspond to some location x, i, and y, j. We are going to approximate it with a parallelogram. And the parallelogram is going to have the same side lengths as that curved patch over that rectangle. Now, why do we want to use a parallelogram? Because it's a linear surface, and we know something about the area of a parallelogram. Now recall that if we want to figure out the area of a parallelogram, we need to know two vectors that correspond to the following. There's going to be some vector A here that forms the side of the parallelogram on one side, and then there'll be a vector B here that forms the other side of the parallelogram. The area is just going to be the length of that cross product of those two vectors. Now, we used this idea when we talked about tangent planes. If we took our patch of surface area right there, we are going to intersect this with coordinate planes to try to find what these vectors are. Remember that our axes are oriented like this. So if we were to pick a fixed value for our coordinate plane, so let's say we took one coordinate plane that went something like this, and it's fixed at y equals yj, we can draw a vector, and if we think about this coordinate plane as such, so there will be our z and there will be our y, we've got this curve formed by our patch, we've got our point, and there's our vector a. We are going to take it to have a length of delta x in the i direction, because we want it to have the same length as that subdivision rectangle rij. We know because we're in a fixed y plane, there'll be no coordinate there. And we recall from tangent planes that the slope is given by the x partial derivative right at that point, x, i, y, j, and we're going to scale it by the same delta x. And another way to visualize it is this would be our delta x, and this would be our delta x times the fx. 
Now, similarly, when we have this patch of surface area, we can intersect it with a fixed plane in the y direction. So something that looks like this. And right at that point, we can generate our other vector b. And if we were to take a look at this coordinate plane, remember that our axes are oriented like this. And if we are fixing it at some x equals xi, and the plane that we are going to see right here is going to have a curve. There will be our vector. It will have zero contribution in the x direction. We're going to set it to have a delta y length in the y direction to match the size of the rij rectangle. And then in the k direction, the slope here will be given by the partial derivative with respect to y weighted by this same delta y in the k direction. So if we want to figure out the area of that parallelogram approximation, we have to take the cross product of these two vectors. Delta x, 0, fx, delta x, 0, delta y, fy, delta y. So this is going to produce an i, 0, minus fx, delta x, delta y, minus j, delta x, fy, delta y, minus 0, and then plus k, delta x, delta y. fx at x, i, y, j, delta x, delta y in the i direction, a negative f, y, x, i, y, j, delta x, delta y in the j direction, and then a delta x, delta y in the k direction. So the length of this approximation ends up giving me the following. Each one of these terms has a common factor of delta x, delta y. So that's all going to get squared. Then I'll have an fx squared, an fy squared, and a 1. Remembering that all of these points are at x, i, y, j. Each one of these terms is positive. The area of this patch is approximately given by the square root of fx squared evaluated at x, i, y, j, f, y squared evaluated at x, i, y, j, plus 1, delta x, delta y. So then the total surface area, our approximation of it, is then simply just going to be a sum i equals 1 to n, j equals 1 to n of all of these approximations to these patches, i equals 1 to n, j equals 1 to n, square root fx squared xiyj, fy squared xiyj plus 1, delta x, delta y. Now this ends up being a Riemann sum for this function in the green box. We are going to now define the total surface area to be the limit as n goes to infinity of this Riemann sum. And I'm just going to switch the order up and write it as 1 plus fx squared, fy squared, understanding that each one of those partial derivatives is evaluated at x, i, y, j. Since these fx and fy are continuous, on R, that means this function here is also continuous on our rectangle R, which means that this is integrable on R. That means the integral will exist. The surface area is now a double integral over that rectangle of fx xy squared, fy squared at some generic xy with our dA. Now, this can be evaluated by Fubini's theorem. And remember that it's only over some rectangle. But if we wanted to define it over some general region, D, something like this, what's important is that we bound them in some rectangle. And then what we do is define an extension, capital F. It will equal this 1 plus fx squared fy squared if we are in D, and it will equal 0 if we are in R but not in D. The surface area over some function f of x, y defined on some region D in R2 is simply a double integral over that region, 1 plus fx squared fy squared dA, and we can use Fubini's theorem 
to evaluate this just like we would before. So to try to illustrate this, let's find the surface area of the function f of x and y is 1 plus 3x plus 2y squared above the region d, where d is going to be given by this illustration. D is this entire triangular region there. So the surface area is given by this integral as we've listed before. Now what we need to do is decide how best to describe D. As it stands right now, it is easiest to define D as a type two region. Type two means that the Y values are constant. Y goes from zero to one. And now we need to figure out the X boundaries. Well, this line has a slope of one half, and that means x is 2y. So the x value will always be greater than zero, but less than 2y. And it's easiest to see that if we just draw one of these horizontal slices, discuss the endpoints. This will be at zero and y, and this will be at 2y and y. The x partial derivative here is a three. The y partial derivative will give us a four y. Note that both of these are continuous everywhere in R2. So we have no worries about the existence of this integral. So the surface area is going to be an integral from 0 to 1, an integral from 0 to 2y, 1 plus 3 squared plus 4y squared. And that 4y is in a bracket. Integrate x first and then y. We'll have 10 plus 16y squared. Because this is a constant with respect to x, the x integral will be very straightforward. I'll have x times 10 plus 16y squared evaluated from 0 to 2y, and then that result will be integrated over y. This is going to give me an integral 0 to 1, 2y into 10 plus 16y squared dy. To integrate this, I need to make a substitution. u is 10 plus 16y squared. du will be 32y dy would be 16 times 2y. And the reason I'm doing that is because I have a 2y dy present. If y is 0, this tells me that u will be 10. And if y is 1, this tells me that u will be 26. So my new integral will be an integral from 10 to 26, the square root of u times 1 over 16 du. So this is going to give me 1 over 16 u to the 3 over 2 divided by 3 over 2 from 10 to 26. 1 16th times 2 thirds times 26 to the 3 halves minus 10 to the 3 halves. This is just going to be 1 over 24, 26 to the 3 halves, 10 to the 3 halves. So once you've got the surface area formula, you have in principle a way to calculate the surface area for any function z equals f of x and y.